In every house, uh -huh. there are rooms. Uh -huh. You have the bedroom and the in the, the kitchen and the dining room and the in the den and we even have closets and and, and, and even have an attic. Yes, in our home, you have an office. Uh -huh. you, 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 with, with your computer there in the office. Right. Yeah. But, but what would it be like to invite Jesus into your home? All right. And, and yeah. when you open the door and, and you got to realize where the scripture says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. All right. And see, see, there's a door that Jesus knocks on, yeah. but, but he's the one that.
But not only that, but the question is, is how high is his love? All right. His love is so high yes. that it's going to take you and me to heaven one day. Yes. It's a high love. And, and then not only is it a high love, but it is also a deep love. Yeah. It's deep enough to reach down to the very depths of sin and lift us up out of it. Yes. See, what Paul is simply saying is that Christ's love is a great love for us. And when we understand his love, the discouragement that we go through sometimes, it will all be short-lived. All right. You, go. you know, I, I, you know, I run across saints all the time. The Lord. They walk around with their head down, feeling that they're not loved, and the church doesn't love them, and, 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 the, and the saints doesn't love them, and, and you know, they, and they just go around feeling all down in the blues. Mm -hmm. But you know what? What would lift you out of that? Come on. Uh -huh. Comprehending Christ's love for you. Amen. 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 Well, what Paul is saying that, that none of us are beyond the reach of Christ's love. And, 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 and the good news is, is that he loves you. All right. Yeah. Come on. You know, yeah, you know uh, someone asked a, a great theologian one day, uh, tell me, uh, uh, Dr. So-and-so, uh, out of all your years in, in theological studies and all your years in the church, what is the most profound, deepest thing that you have ever heard? That professor, he scratched his head for a moment. He said, the most profoundest thing that I've ever heard was Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me. So, Amen. you know, brothers and sisters, it's just that simple. Yeah. See, sometimes we want to get all off into the weeds and we want to get deep and all of that. But yeah. Paul prays. I mean, this is a very prayer that he prayed that they would comprehend Jesus' love. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yep. Clay Cross, some of you know the Christian artist Clay, Clay Cross. In one of his songs, his love is strong. I like it. It says that his love is strong enough to win the fight. His love is strong in good and right. When the heart gets weak and the road gets long, his love is strong. All right. Amen. David Crowder. I know some of you have heard of David Crowder. Mm -hmm. David Crowder Band. <laughs> Yeah. In his song, I Am, it says that there is no place that his love can't reach. I like that. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean no, no matter where you find yourself, then there's nowhere you can go that his love can't find you. All right. All right. We're, we're, we're beyond, the, the, we, we, we can never go beyond the reach of his love. Amen. In fact, Paul says it this way in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and, verse, and 39. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present, anything present or anything in the future, nor powers, neither height nor death, nor any other thing in all the creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, not too long ago, I was doing a funeral of a man, and I read this passage here in Romans chapter 8, and the words that I emphasized to that grieving family was, nothing can separate us from his love, All right. not even death. All right, All right, All right, All right. All right. Paul says that if we can only comprehend this love, if we can only realize that his love is strong. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. His love is a profound love. And in fact, it's, he said that when you understand this love, that you will be filled with all the fullness of God. But there's a third thing here that Paul drives home. Yes. And that is that Paul prayed that our minds would be blown right. by the knowledge of God. Yes, sir. 
that our minds will be blown. You know, when you read verse 20, and I'm going to close on this verse. But when you read verse 20, Paul says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Do you know that these last two verses, as Paul closes out this chapter, they're called a doxology. A doxology is a praise. It is as though Paul prays a prayer and then he goes into worship, praising God for the great things that he's going to do Amen. and are doing in their lives. Right. Thing that here that I like here is that Paul is simply saying that there is a power that is at work in you and me. And that when we understand this, we can do exploits. That's why Paul prays that they would comprehend not only Christ's love, but the power Amen. that God has invested inside of us. Uh -huh. That we have resurrection power inside of us. Yeah, right. The same power that raised Jesus right. from the dead Amen. lives in us. Uh, Amen. In fact, that's why when the very weakest of Christians falls on his or her knees, yeah. the devil trembles. Oh, yeah. Because when we are at our weakest, then we are strong. Come on. We're strong because we yes. have the power of God inside of us. Amen. But notice that as Paul closes this prayer with a praise, he says, now unto him who is able. And you can just pause right there. Okay. And Paul is simply saying, the God that we serve is able. He's the God that is able to do extravagant things. He's able to do the impossible. All right. He's able to do the incredible. He's able to do the outrageous. He's able to do the things that are mind-boggling, the things that will blow your mind. And that's why he closes on this high note of he's able. And the one that is able is able to do it in accordance with the same power that is inside of you and me. All right. Yes, sir. See, the great thing about the God that we serve is that with him, you get more than what you expect. Right. Yes. Yes. He wants to blow our minds. Yes. Uh -huh. you, you see, he didn't just make a, a single drop of, of oh, water. No, no. Come on. He made oceans of war. The God that we serve, he didn't make just a, he didn't create just one single star. He made galaxies. Oh, he didn't make just one type of bird. But he made birds of all sorts and all kinds. This God that we serve didn't just make a hill. He made rocky mountains all right. and, and all the other mountains that, that are out there. This God that we serve didn't just make a sun. He made sunsets and sunrises. Yeah. Amen. 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 He's able to exceed all of our expectations. Amen. Paul is simply letting us know here as he closes on this high note, he said that then it's God, that there's no limit to his love. Yes, yes, yes. That there's no boundaries to his blessings and there's no fences withholding his faithfulness. All right, come on. That's good. There's no lines drawn that separate us from his love and yes. from his salvation. Paul lets us know that there's no God Restrictions right. to experience in his righteousness. Right. Paul says he's able to go beyond. Yes. Notice how Paul loads superlatives upon superlatives. Right. He says exceedingly, the King James, abundantly, above all we can ask or think 
I mean, I mean, I don't know if you really thought about this. Uh -huh. I don't know if you really give them this thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.